Hello, thank you for joining us for Put Your Debt on a Diet. My name is Tara Alderete, Director of Education and Community Relations here at MMI, and I'm looking forward to sharing some strategies with you today that can help reduce debt and keep it off. So let's get started. As we walk through the presentation today, we'll look at how much it costs to carry a credit card balance while only paying the minimums, the true cost of credit. We'll also look at how to put your debt on a diet, reducing debt at a faster rate through rapid payoff strategies, and how to free up money in your budget to roll into the rapid payoff plans through a step-down spending strategy. We'll also talk about the basics of creating a balanced budget and look at ways to build an emergency fund and start saving after debt is paid off. Finally, we'll look at some examples of how delaying the start of long-term retirement savings because of debt can impact you in the long term. Is this you? Many people aren't sure how they ended up in credit card debt. It just seems to happen. One month you might have an emergency. Another month, a wedding you needed to attend out of town. Then there was the birthday party you forgot about until the last minute, and the shoes that were on sale that you really needed for softball league. And before you know it, the bill comes due. The start of a new year is a great time to make resolutions. And for a lot of folks, changing their financial situation is a big one. In fact, 49% of recently surveyed consumers wanted to save more money this year, and another combined 50% wanted to either completely pay off their credit card debt or at least make on-time payments towards that debt this year. So let's take a look at how we might be able to do that. I'd like to introduce you to the Alvarez family. We'll be talking about their situation throughout today's presentation. They're pretty average, young professionals with a growing family and children. They use credit cards for unexpected expenses, for the little extras that always seem to pop up, and they do treat themselves once in a while. But over the last few years, their credit card debt has accumulated and it's starting to concern them. This is a snapshot of the Alvarez family's debt. Now, for consumers who actually carry debt from month to month, the average debt is $6,849. And that average credit card interest rate is about 17.3%. This translates to a lot of interest for consumers who carry a balance. So as we take a look at the snapshot of the Alvarez family, we see that their debt load is $16,883. And their average credit card interest rate is about 16.1%. Right now, they're paying only the minimum payment required by their credit card companies, which is 2% of the balance. That's about $338 a month in credit card payments that they're making. At this rate, consider how long it might take them to completely pay off this existing debt. If you guessed 30 years, you're correct. Incredibly, it would take them 30 years to pay back almost $17,000 at just the minimum payments of 2% of their balance. So if we take a look at the chart we see here, in the early years of repayment, most of that payment is going towards interest and the balance reduces slowly. Interest continues to accrue. Over the course of repayment, the Alvarez family is going to pay a staggering cost of more than $22,000 in interest. And keep in mind, this assumes that no additional credit card debt is added along the way. 2% of the outstanding balance is a typical minimum payment for many credit card companies. Some require a little more, maybe 2.5%, but paying only the minimum can really end up costing a lot of money. So no matter what your debt load, we're going to talk about strategies today that can help you reduce your debt faster and save, and save more money over time. Here's the good news. The Alvarez family, and you, can accelerate debt payoff to get you out of debt faster and really do save overall interest. No matter how you got where you are, it is possible to make a change that will put your debt on a diet. And there are several ways to approach these rapid recovery plans. So let's take a closer look now. The first step is to make the commitment. You have a goal to get out of debt. You're at point A, you want to get to point B. But without a plan, you may be like the top line, wandering a little, getting distracted, taking the long way from A to B. But if you're focused, create a goal, and stick to the plan, you can get from A to B much more quickly. So the first step is to have a family meeting. Set the goal, get the commitment from your family. 
And of course, this depends on the ages of your children and family obligations. But in general, adults and older children should be older children should be on the same page regarding priorities, spending, and sacrifices that everybody's willing to make to reach that overall goal. The next thing you'll want to do is stop incurring new debt. Put away the credit cards. Don't close them, but make them inaccessible to avoid overspending while shopping and also impulse purchases. If necessary, you can carry a card for emergencies, but be careful to use it only if it's absolutely necessary. Whenever a spending opportunity presents itself, just remember your goal and the priorities you set as a family and stay with the plan. The last part of step one is to contact your lenders and ask them for a lower interest rate. If your payment history has been good and you're a longtime customer, they just might give you a lower rate. But if you've had late payments, the answer could be no. But it's still worth a try. Lenders often try to be competitive with their interest rates that consumers could get if they were to go with a different lender. Okay, step two. Once you establish your goal, priorities, and family commitment, the next thing you'll want to do is build your rapid recovery plan. First, make a list of all your credit cards, including interest rate, amount owed, and the payment that you're making each month. Here we've placed them in order of highest to lowest interest rate, but when you first list it, you can list them in any order that you like. The rapid recovery plan works by maintaining the same overall payment. In this case, it's $337.65, or we can round up, until all debts are paid off. Um, a lot of times people only pay the minimum on each card and then when one card is paid off, instead of taking that amount and rolling it into the next card that's, that they're trying to pay off, they see it as freed up money or money that they can spend on other things. But if you have a goal to get out of debt faster, as long as debt remains, paying it down with every available dollar that you have should be the priority. All rapid recovery plans work on this principle of maintaining overall payments each month, rolling debt from debt and larger payments until everything's paid off. So sometimes you'll hear these approaches referred to as a debt snowball or a debt avalanche. There's two basic approaches to this method. The first is rapid account reduction, and then the second is rapid interest pay down. So let's take a closer look at rapid account reduction. This focuses on paying the debt with the overall lowest balance first. And then once that balance is paid off, you take the amount from that balance and, and apply it to the next one and so on and so off and so on and so forth until everything is paid off. Some people prefer this method because they get a sense of accomplishment. You'll see a balance go to zero quickly. So you get that momentum and you can keep going. Um, but remember, it's important not to charge new debt once that first one is paid off. The second method here is rapid interest pay down. And this method focuses on paying off the highest interest rate first and then working your way through the list in that order. Some people like this method instead because they get a sense of accomplishment knowing that they're focused on the highest interest rate credit card, which is the debt that's costing them the most. In general, the rapid interest paydown will have the fastest payout and cost the least in interest, but it's up to you which method you pick. Whatever you go with is what will work for you. There are many calculators out there available on the internet that can help you run the numbers. Just Google debt snowball calculator or debt avalanche calculator and you'll get some great results. So the next thing you want to do is review your budget to see if you can afford something called a rapid recovery amplifier. And this is just additional money that you can add to your minimum payments to pay your debt down even faster and pay less in overall interest. If you can find an additional $50 in your budget, you can get out of debt that much faster. If you can't afford more than the minimum payment, that's okay. The plan will still work. But if you can afford to add something a little bit more, it'll be just faster and it'll save you more money in the long run. You'll see how much faster in a moment. We'll give you an example. The next step is to begin your rapid recovery plan. You'll pay the minimum payment on each bill, focusing the amplifier or that extra money on the bill with the highest interest rate in this example. When the balance with the highest interest rate is paid in full, you'll roll the payment you are making into the balance with the next highest interest rate. And you'll keep making the same total payment, but now you're focusing all that extra money towards the highest interest card remaining. 
you keep rolling the payment on the next highest card and so on until everything is paid off. With the example amount of debt, interest rates, and minimum payments, you can see that implementing a rapid recovery plan can save substantial amount of time and money. If the Alvarez family does nothing and simply plays, pays the minimum payment due each month on every card, it'll take them many years to repay, and they will pay over $22,000 in interest, as we saw earlier. But if they do set up a rapid recovery plan and pay the minimums only until the first card is paid off, but then roll that amount into the second highest card and so on, always paying at least that $337 towards their debt every month, they'll be paid off in 76 months, and they'll only pay almost $9,000 in interest, $8,999. $8, $8,997, I'm sorry, in interest. But if they can find an extra $50 in their budget to add an amplifier to their plan, the results are amazing. They'll be paid in full in 59 months, and it'll take the total interest that they pay down to only $6,486. So oftentimes we talk to people about how they can find the money to create an amplifier in their budget. So let's consider that. When people are asked how they can do this, the first one, of course, is wishful thinking. Many people think that if they just had more money, they'd be able to pay off their debt. The truth is this rarely happens. Let, let's look at some other realistic options. Borrowing from family or friends. This could be an option for some people, depending on the amount of debt. There are pros and cons to this. The main con is that borrowing money from family members can really put a strain on relationships. And of course, you must pay it back. A pro, though, might be that a family member would let you borrow money at a low interest rate. If you do decide to go this route, always make sure your terms are in writing and treat it like a business agreement. This will help minimize any potential for hard feelings in the family. Next, it's tempting to decrease or suspend your 401k contributions to get out of debt faster. But retirement savings rely on the time value of money. This is steady contributions over a long period of time to build and grow. You also lose out on employer matches if you're not contributing to your 401k or 403b. Stopping or decreasing contribution hurts your long-term retirement savings growth and can really have a negative impact. It's not something you can you should consider unless you can put definite parameters around it, such as only for a specific short period of time if your debt is very, very high and other means of increasing your amplifier are not options. We're going to take a look later at an example of what happens when you dip into your 401k retirement savings or delay contributions to pay off debt. Just as stopping your retirement contributions, borrowing against them can be very costly. You also need to be aware that if you don't pay back this type of loan, you may incur taxes and penalties on the withdrawn amount. It's best to think of this money as untouchable. As far as your regular savings, if you have a large amount, then you should consider it you, to, you should consider using it to pay down your debt. But at current interest rates, your savings is likely not earning nearly what you're paying in credit card interest. But if you only have a small emergency fund, You'll want to leave that intact, even though it'll take longer to repay your debt. A small emergency fund of about $1,000 is a good idea to handle those unexpected things that come up to keep you from incurring new debt on your credit cards. Use windfall amounts. A windfall amount is a lump sum or unexpected amount of money that comes your way. This could be something like a tax refund, a generous gift from a family member, a bonus, an inheritance, anything like that. If you do get windfall money, you might be tempted to just spend it on other things. But if you're disciplined and you apply it as a one-time amplifier, it'll help you get out of debt that much faster. Finally, tighten your budget. This is oftentimes the best method for finding additional money, but it's also very difficult in a lot of ways. This is because it's going to require reducing the amount you spend on certain things or eliminating them altogether. It also might mean taking on some extra work to boost your income. Let's take a look at a step-down spending technique. This is another way you could create an amplifier just by finding additional money in your budget. This technique suggests that you consider how you could spend less money for certain things. So in the example we see here of going to a movie, 
if you skip the soda and popcorn, it's going to save you about $20. But if you go to a matinee, instead of going to a nighttime movie, it'll save you even more. If you rent a movie, instead of going to the movies, you're now spending $2 instead of $45. And did you know that you can oftentimes check out free movies from the library or even online? and that will cost you nothing. So this is an example of a step-down spending technique, and you can use this in other areas as well. The point of this exercise is to challenge your own assumptions about the ways you spend money, and really think about alternatives that can still bring enjoyment, but also help you achieve your overall goal. Once you've adjusted your budget and you have found additional money to put toward paying down your debt, no matter how much it is, you'll, you'll want to make sure that you add that money to your debt repayment every single month. Let's talk a little bit more about budgets. If you don't have a budget, it's important to create one. Don't just do a mental tally. You'll really want to sit down as a family and create a written budget. If you don't have a budget and you're not quite sure where to start, there are lots of tools that can help you. You can check out a book on budgeting at the library, read personal finance, finance blogs, or even attend a class or webinar on budgeting. You can also visit our website, moneymanagement.org. We've got some fantastic tools and resources that can help you. You'll also want to consider appointing a family CFO. So what is this? This is the person in your family who's really focused on the finances and make sure that the household stays on track. Why have a family CFO? Well, the best way to achieve goals is to have measurable goals and accountability. What gets measured gets done, is an old saying. And the, the family CFO isn't necessarily the bad cop, but it's everybody's responsibility to stick to the plan, and this person just keeps an eye on things and makes adjustments as necessary to make sure nothing is slipping through the cracks. Basically, a budget tracks all of your inflows, everything you take home, and all of your expenses, everything that goes out. If you have more outflow than inflow, or if you're spending more than you make, the likely source, this could be the likely source of your credit card debt. If you're charging and carrying a balance, this is likely how you could get into trouble. To get out of the cycle, you have to bring your inflow and your outflow or your income and your expenses into alignment. To stop the debt spiral, you have to at least be at zero, which is a balanced budget. But the goal is not to stop there. The goal is really to bring your expenses below your income because that's the only way you'll get out of debt and then be able to achieve the next level, which is saving. Once your budget is working and you've paid off all your debt, what comes next? In this example, the Alvarez's would have an additional $387 each month once their debt is paid off. They could use that to begin pay off other debts that are maybe secured, like mortgages, cars, or they could allocate that money to savings. Once your debt is paid off, we recommend setting up a savings fund with at least three to six months of your budgeted expenses. This emergency savings can cover unexpected events, things like illness, injury, unemployment, even car trouble. You can also establish savings for bigger purchases and extras like family vacations. Now, just like you can step down your spending, you can also step up your savings. If money's tight and you're not thinking you can sustain the rapid recovery plan, try the 52 step, 52 step up savings challenge weekly. And this is a great time to start it at the beginning of a new year. You'll start off saving $1 a week and then increase that every week until you get to the end of the year, which is 52 weeks. So the first week you save $1, the second week you save two, the third week you save three, and so on and so forth. If you implement this saving strategy, at the end of 52 weeks, you'll have an incredible $1,378. This is an excellent way to start that emergency savings fund. As you continue each week to ramp up your savings and use the step-down spending method to reduce your expenses, you'll be amazed at how quickly you can free up additional money and start to see that savings balance really grow. So maybe you don't have credit card debt or you're on a successful rapid recovery plan and you've paid it off and you've built your three to six months of emergency savings. 
what comes next? Can you pay down other kinds of debt using the rapid interest pay down strategy? You absolutely can. Simply apply an amplifier to your monthly payment to pay down the debt and save interest. With secure debt like cars and mortgages, make sure you do two things though. First, you'll want to check with your lender to make sure they're any, they're, they don't have any prepayment penalties. If you have a prepayment clause in your contract, you might not be able to use this rapid method per, for that particular debt. The second thing is whenever you make extra payments or payments above the monthly minimum, contact your lender in writing and let them know that you want the payment applied to pay down the principal. Earlier we talked about how not contributing to your 401k or delaying contributions because of debt can make an, impo an, an impact on your future goals. So I want to take a closer look at that now. Here's an example of two different families with the same take-home pay, $72,000. The family on the left is saving near the max 401k contributions and taking advantage of every company match available. But the family on the right is making minimal contributions to their 401k and they only get a partial company match. Here's a, t here's a look at the same family's budgets. They have very different budgets, as you can see. So they do live in similar areas and they do have similar monthly bills, but the family on the right tends to spend a lot of money eating out, things like convenience, food, and entertainment. And they also have about $400 a month that they're spending on credit card payments. Because they're living above their means, they have little or no emergency savings and so they're filling the gap with credit. What's the difference? What difference does this really make? Well, using the annual pre-tax investment for each family, the Joneses on the left are on track for good retirement savings. While the Alvarezes, the family on the right, will have very little saved when they really need it. But if the Alvarez family does a rapid payoff plan like we talked about earlier and starts contributing at the same level as the Joneses in just five years, they'll be in a much better position at retirement age. But you can see, they'll still have almost $500,000 less than the Jones family. Their $16,000 or almost $17,000 in credit card debt is costing them much more than the interest that they're paying. It's also costing them the earning power of their pre-tax retirement savings accounts. By putting off retirement savings for five years, they're foregoing $500,000 in investment growth. So if they don't build a rapid recovery pay down plan and, and get out of debt, but if they continue to pay their credit cards at just the minimum, they might never start saving for their future because they, they don't think they can afford it. Sometimes the hardest part can just be getting started. So I do want to share some tools with you to help. If you check out our website, moneymanagement.org, we've got many articles on personal finance, blogs, newsletters, education classes, webinars, all kinds of tools and strategies to help get you started. There are also different online tools and apps. And although we don't endorse specific applications, there are several that can be very helpful in helping you build your budget. A lot of these tools also link with your credit cards and bank accounts for real-time budgeting and money management. The other thing to do is check with your financial institution. So when you're ready to start your savings plan, there are um, programs at your bank that can help you. So check with them and ask what kind of budgeting and savings tools they offer. Sometimes, despite your best efforts, you just can't create a balanced budget. You might need help with it. Maybe you're not able to make more than your minimum payments, or maybe you've got missed or late payments. Maybe you're over the limit. Maybe you've got additional fees and you're getting collection calls. If you're in that situation, you might need more assistance than a do-it-yourself plan can provide, and we can help you. We've got, we've got counselors available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to discuss your specific situation. Please give us a call at 866-889-9347 or just visit us at moneymanagement.org to look at how we might be able to help you set up a budget and get your debt paid down if you need additional assistance. Well, we have covered a lot today. Before we end, I'd like to recap. If you wanna put your debt on a diet, you absolutely can. Here's how. First, assess, assess your situation and create your family goals. 
Then, choose a rapid recovery plan method. List all your credit card debts and the interest rates and minimum payments and pick the method that might work best for you. Maintain a monthly budget and stay on track to help keep you on track and focused on your goal. Consider a step-down spending plan to help you. And add savings to your plan. Once your credit card debt is paid off, consider accelerating the other debts you owe or building your savings retirement, your savings and retirement goals. Thank you so much for attending. I'd like to remind you that today's presentation is designed as an educational information only meeting.